I need to make a new tool handle for a, a new skew chisel that I just got. And so I thought I'd put the camera on and run through my procedure for doing that. I make handles for all sorts of tools, not just turning tools. Uh, here's some file handles that I made. These are oversized file handles. Uh, usually the file handle that you buy is so small you can hardly get a grip on it, but these are give you a good solid grip for putting some heavy duty filing and here's some smaller ones. And uh, this is a uh, countersink that I had uh, laying around and uh, didn't use and I thought well there's so many times I could use a, a hand operated one. So I made a little handle of a piece of mahogany and it works like a charm. And here's one I did with for a scratch all uh, for the same thing. Um, of course I do make them for my turning tools as well. This is a SurePoint scraper that I, I got for Christmas last year and uh, there's a nice maple handle I made for it. And here's a, a three quarter inch spindle gouge that I made. Uh, this handle happens to be out of mahogany. And uh, the shape and size of the handle is kind of a personal thing. Whatever, whatever fits you and whatever feels good to you. I, looked at the tools I had already bought and I found that the Robert Taylor handles were the most comfortable for me and I found the Sorby handles to be a little on the short side so I like a long uh, fairly thin handle and uh, so by doing it myself I can pretty much uh, make it any way I want for this particular handle I have a nice piece of Paduke that I'm going to use for the skew chisel handle. Really the only thing you need besides a piece of wood is a some kind of a ferrule and that's the metal thing that goes right here and gives some strength to the joint where the, uh, the metal meets the wood and uh, they come in different sizes depending on the size of the tool that you have. You can buy them. Uh, I use these plumbing couplers, these copper plumbing couplers and uh, you can buy them in uh, different sizes. This is a three-quarter, this is a half, and all the way down to uh, little small ones. Um, what I do then is I cut them in half and I get two out of a, out of a uh, piece. The, I get the ones that have the little dimple in the center which allows you to only stick the pipe in so far on each side. That gives me an automatic center mark and also a little place to start with the, uh, the saw. I use a hacksaw to cut them in half. So I actually get two ferrules out of, a, out of one coupler. And that's really the only thing you need besides the piece of wood to, uh, to make it. So I'll take this piece of wood. I've already got it marked out for the center. I'm going to make this handle about 16 inches long for my skew chisel. It's a, three, it's a one inch skew chisel, so it's a bigger one than the one I have right now. I don't need a longer handle for it. I've already got the ends marked for the centers and I'll just take it over to the lathe now and we'll get it uh, turned into shape. Okay, one thing you want to do is to kind of look at your wood and check the grain and any defects and you'll want the tightest uh, and most defect free end to be the end where the tool is going to be inserted and I see on this one I have a little knot hole down on this end or not a knot hole but where a, a branch was growing so I think I'll put my tool in on this end so this will be the end that I'll uh, it, uh, size to fit the ferrule and end up drilling the hole in. I usually put that in on the tailstock size for no real particular reason other than it just seems to be easier for me to to do it down there. Gives me a little bit more room. I'm away from the headstock. Just tighten this in. I could use a longer tool rest for this operation. The tool rest is only 14 inches and I'm going to be making this 6, 16, so I'll have to move the tool rest back and forth a little bit, but that happens. I'll try to get a little closer shot of this. Okay, I'll start by roughing it down to a cylinder. 
for that I'll use my trusty uh, roughing gouge. Start to lay that on and get a little speed up going here. Okay, that should be about down and around. Yep, looks good to me. And I'm going to clean these chips up a little bit, and uh, the next step will be to mark out for uh, where the ferrule goes. So we want the ferrule to be on this end, and we want it to stick out from the end of the ferrule about a sixteenth of an inch or so. And then I'm going to use a white pencil because this is the dark wood, and uh, the uh, white will show up much better. I'll make a mark for that and then I'll rotate it and draw a circle there. And that will give us our depth for the, uh, the length of the ferrule. And then for the inside, or to turn it down to fit on the inside, I start out and I use my calipers. I measure it at the outside diameter. And then I turn it down to the outside and then gradually sneak up on the inside through trial and error. And uh, I want to get a nice tight fit so that I can pound it on and uh, not have to worry about it coming off and I don't have to mess with glues or anything like that. we are. And we have a ways, little ways to go here yet. So we'll just continue on. 